So, um, so good morning. So after this outstanding presentation from Alexei, I think it's really time to reconcile risk management one and risk management two. So as a quick reminder, risk management one is you really do this for the external world, for auditors, for bank, insurance, credit rate agencies, for your annual report. Risk management one, you want to add value and to basically help uh, managers to make risk focus decisions. So what I propose is to basically the international standard ISO 7000 as a tool to help man managers to make better risk informed decisions. So this is uh, usually when you spend a lot of time in risk management one, you end up with this kind of difficulty, not only because you are doing things that nobody cares, you know, or you are quite frustrated, but also for different type of risk, you might have different kind of procedure that you try to reconcile, so it become quite a, a, a nightmare. Another reason where risk management be could become a nightmare is when people associate risk with compliance, or risk for auditing, or risk for insurance purpose, for regulation. That's exactly what we discuss about before is that's a risk management one world yeah now is it really risk management no of course right so what is it one of the uh, uh, many frameworks that exist COSO have been very popular and when basically in this session in south africa i just want to show you that uh, COSO is a writer of um, uh, pwc was the writer of the COSO, basically invite me to speak and what we, the first thing I ask them is change the title of our joint presentation. So clarify the confusion between uh, COSO and ISO. So let's come back to risk. First thing is, of course, what is the definition? That's extremely important. When people communicate to each other, you need to understand the words that the other party is using. So. Risk was defined as combination of a probability and a likelihood um, associated with an event. So this is how basically it was considered that risk equal an event. And still many people thinking this way. Now in ISO, we redefine risk as effect of uncertainty on objective. That sounds a bit strange as the first uh, impression. Okay, we start with objective. So everyone has objective, health and safety, project management, finance, etc. You don't know whether you can achieve it or not. So there is an uncertainty associated to objective. So the effect of uncertainty is called risk. So we have moved now to, in a world where risk was before associated to an event to something linked to objective. That's quite fundamental. That means you cannot talk about risk if you have not defined the objective. Does it make sense anymore? And that now it's open up to a totally new world, which is decision making. That's uh, Alexei have indicated. And that's not new. Yeah. So definitely we have to look at this new world because they have tools that exist. So um, now there are many standards that exist for a pack particular type of risk in the ISO world. You, you can see uh, risk will be called non-conformity in for quality risk in for an environmental management system will be considered pollution. So interruption, accident, uh, non-compliance, barbary, all are these risk. And that's why ISO 7000 was created to become a guidance for all standards as a reference. So that's, uh, that's uh, the, the starting point. Now, you might tell me, well, in my company, I've already a lot of tools, techniques for deal with a particular type of risk. So what shall I do with all of this aspect? Well, ISO 7000 will propose you a current structure, a structure approach to basically deal with all type of risk so that when you reconcile, you really connect risk, performance, decision making, governance, etc. So that's, that's uh, in fact, the very add value. You standardize basically the way you manage risk in the organization. So now that's remember what we said that what is not risk management. Uh, now in one chart, you can basically in one slide like this, 
this is the philosophy of ISO 13000. So you have risk associated with objectives. And of course, managers are making decisions all the time. So of course, it's linked to decision making. But you always make decision under uncertainty based on the available information. So insert the word uncertainty is there. And of course, you need to measure, you know, how well you are doing, you know, how good you are approaching the target, your objective. So performance management is there. And that's what managers are doing all the time when they make decisions. They, what is the best allocation of resources? In short, time, people and money. That's what they constantly do when they make decisions. And hundreds of decisions are taken every day. Now, what about the other aspect? Audit, reporting, insurance? Well, it's still there. But these are tools to basically you know, to, to help to set up the, the time frame. So uh, this is a presentation basic, basically I made uh, in a conference for the Institute of Directors. And the idea is how to bring risk to the board level. So I, I saw, let's not make it complicated for the people from the board. So five, you know, important recommendations. So number one, use an international reference. So that sounds for me obvious. I would say I've been there in risk management for the last 20 years. This is probably the best thing that happened in risk management. Finally, there is an international recognized reference that can deal with all type of risks applied to any sector, any industry, and that's clarify a lot of, of things. And it's a very short document. Uh, it's 13 page, extremely small, translate in 23 languages, and basically ISO, which is a standardization body, basically you can refer, why shall we use ISO? Here are the, some key, basically, uh, advantage, link risk with objective, cover all type of risk, ri some kind of recognition. So if we, this is one of the result of our work, is to work, basically write to every country uh, that is in charge of standards and get ISO 7000 becoming a national standard. And I'm, can, I'm quite pleased that in Sweden it became the SS ISO 7000. So that means it is a national standard for risk management. So uh, another aspect is basically we are following and, and there are a lot of members. Now we have around uh, 85,000 members. So we need to, uh, to basically um, consolidate all of this. So another aspect of the board is use a simple risk management uh, architecture. And I would say ISO 2000 pre propose, you know, a three pillar structure, which is principle, framework and process. So this is one of the many things that we hear very often, that people restrict risk management to a simple risk management process, identify, analyze, evaluate, treat, etc. That's not risk management. I think, uh, uh, I mean, we, we start to, to understand this. Uh, if we want to make the link with decision making, clearly the principles, that's very important. Risk management must create value. That, I mean, any activity in the organization, if it does not create value, stop it, you know. But now, if we wanted to reconcile risk measurement one and risk measurement two, so you need anyway risk management one. So maybe we discussed with Alexei, maybe spend 10% of your time for risk management one, but 90%, you know, to, to basically uh, create value, integrate into all existing process, part of decision making. These are the principles that were in the 2000 version, and you can see the third one, part of decision making is now being more explicit and, uh, and the structure basically uh, change a little bit in terms of layout, but basically it's top management and then basically you design, implement, monitor, review and make decision to basically update the framework. So, and the risk management process have not really changed. So you have risk assessment and the only purpose of risk assessment, don't forget, is risk treatment. I have a problem, we need to fix it. So that's the risk management process. I mean, we're, and we don't even need to talk about this aspect when you speak with people. Okay, what could go wrong? How to fix it? I mean, is that the day-to-day -day talk basically? And is it ISO 7000? Of course. 
I mean, the, this is a guideline, so you need to simplify. Now, for critical decision, yeah, you better use a quantitative approach. And that's risk management proposes standard, um, uh, a reliable base on which you can prove on which base, you know, a decision I've been taking in, uh, for a particular type of risk. So another aspect is make the link to performance. I think, uh, the, and, and that's what we talked uh, in the previous discussion, you need to integrate risk into day-to-day -day operation in link to performance. So you don't create a risk report, you integrate risk into existing performance report. That's basically the key message. We make a study in 2012 and we see a lot of people who consider risk, we do risk for reporting purpose, for audit purpose, for compliance purpose. So there is still a lot of education that need to be done to basically uh, move ahead. Uh, I think uh, Sarah did mention a bit the, the same idea here. Uh, very important is not to create a parallel management system, some kind of document that will become um, something that who will read it well, the risk manager that wrote it himself, right? This is something that we, we said earlier. But no, you need to integrate risk into existing practice and process at all level. And that's basically you make sure that it adds value. So, and if a manager in your organization said, well, I don't care about risk management, you know, is it his fault? No, it's you. You have not convinced him that you will help the managers to make better decisions. So it's definitely rethink then, find a no, another argument. Yeah. So one of the uh, as aspect basically which is proposed in ISO 7000 is the concept of risk owner. I just wanted to give you one illustration. You know how to you could basically you know make the link with performance. So if you talk about the risk owner, is defined as a person or entity who has the accountability and authority to manage risk. But in fact, the key aspect here is accountability. How can you make someone accountable? Well, if he has authority, the resource and the competence. And I don't know if you have seen in your company, but sometimes and very often you don't have the three together and yet he is accountable. So, uh, you know, you have a person who has the authority and the competence, but when he's asking budget, he doesn't get it. Right, so uh, the concept of risk on is, is quite key. Fifth, uh, basically, uh, recommendation to the board is linked to decision making, of course, and that's the chart that I've mentioned earlier. Yeah, make the link between risk objective with the element of performance, decision making, and best location resources. That's a quick overview about all type of treatments that you can have a look. Uh, um, again, you need to tailor it to a, a particular type of risk um, and then you, for funding might be inside your company or outside. Uh, and then education, of course, uh, that's very important. Many people enter in the risk management world without a proper background in risk management and I would say the good a quick start could be to have an in-depth knowledge of the content of ISO 7000. That's basically what we promote. So we have around 1,400 people certified. Large company have been um, trained uh, from us with a in-house or public session. Um, well, many places in the world. Uh, well, if there are key five key things to remember, see recommendation for the board. Make sure you know these five elements uh, can be considered. A uh, few links basically for information that you could have, so I put it here and well, thank you for your attention.